Welcome back, everyone. Today I've got a game for you with the one faction that haunts my dreams like a Faustian devil. The Underground Duchy. I'm going to be playing a faction that I have relentlessly complained about for ages. I hope you enjoy. I'm starting this game with barely any craftables in my hand, and most of my cards are the same suit, but I'm going to be keeping two of the red ones anyways. We're going to set up in the bottom right corner, not necessarily because it's going to be optimal. No, someone's going to take this raft away from me sooner or later. More so because I felt like it, and if I didn't, someone else would. Our opponents today are going to pick the Arbiter, Lizards, and Cats. A perfectly cromulent draft. And also Arbiter is here. I think this guy has the right take. The Cats player opts for a somewhat unusual build-out. It's pretty typical to see a recruiter in that top clearing, but... Choosing not to actually put anything across the gap is rare, and I can understand at least why he'd want to keep his sawmill out of the way. It seems he's hedging his bets between controlling the choke point and protecting his buildings, and I fear he might lose out on both. As we draft our hands, I consider that my half of the board is currently orange and red, and everything else owned by other people is all yellow, so we're going to toss that and one of the red cards. Starting their first turn, the Marquise takes the fairly reasonable first step of putting a recruiter down, though personally I would have liked it in the bottom left corner. They then recruit, and mysteriously they choose to move their forces into the Lizard Stronghold. I'm not entirely sure, but I have the sneaking suspicion that this Cats player may not be too used to the faction. The Lizards, in this case, will of course overrule the Cats in that clearing, but maybe in the future it'll be worth the battles. The Lizards player starts their turn with hated Fox Scout cast and immediately reveals a deep-seated mole hatred that boils within their blood. A man after my own heart. Just like the Vikings of old, he converts my mole and steals my women. I mean, Raft. These actions, for any normal faction, would prove deleterious, but I'm playing moles. This is just another Tuesday. Perhaps the worst thing this lizard player has managed to do to me is draw all of the rabbit cards at once at the start of the game. I don't know what they plan to do with them, but they sure have them. The Vagabond's turn arrives just as I finally decide to close all my porn tabs long enough to actually pay attention to the game again. I get to watch them circle the map, bringing back my raft, and they draw their boot, which is probably the best possible outcome here. The Arbiter is perhaps the worst Vagabond for the moles to be dealing with, because they're the one that can most rapidly start killing nine things a turn. The moles, in typical fashion, like to put nine or ten things in one clearing and exist virtually nowhere else, as you see me doing already. My turn arrives, and I have a very calculated and complex plan to enact. Just kidding, I'm going to sway Brigadier and end my turn. Some people like to criticize mole players for taking far too long on their turns, but secretly, this faction plays itself. We return to cats, and the faint smell of electrical smoke you may be detecting betrays the fact that their neurons are firing on every cylinder in order to calculate their optimal turn. They choose to put down a second crafter in their mouse clearing, which probably indicates that they have Marine Broker in their hand and want to craft it. There's not really any other reason they would have put that down this early. Myself, I would have preferred that they had their third recruiter set up, probably in that fox clearing where the lizards currently reside. The cats player then confirms my suspicions that they are new with the faction by using a bird card to overwork and build another sawmill very close to me. Just kidding, they're going to revert that choice and fight the lizards instead. Perhaps I should revise my estimation to new player with a grudge. I don't blame them, I mean everyone starts somewhere, but... It feels kind of like they got screwed by lizards earlier sometime, and now they're terrified of them. That's the only reason I can think of as to why you'd start fighting them this early. They then use another bird card to field hospital their cats back, uh, continuing the trend of mysterious decisions. Since this player did eventually admit that they've seen my videos, bird cards give you more actions. You, sh you should g go spend them on that. Possessed of one more acolyte, the lizards use it to further bully me and steal my raft again. But since their hand has more blue and yellow in it than the Ukrainian flag, they can't actually do anything valuable with it, so they just stack warriors up all over the board and wait for at least a card in one other color. We return to the Vagabond now, and this monochrome malcontent has pulled his third sword on the second ruin. 
Looks like our luck is not so good after all. He goes and fights my undefended tunnel. An action that will cost me a card in the long run, removes one of my swaying clearings, and removes my ability to actually get my moles out of the burrow. And in spite of all these things, it is actually nowhere near the worst thing he could have done to me this turn, because he could have gone and blown up the lizards and aided me a card to get himself far further ahead in points. While all of those outcomes sound really bad for me, I really only need four warriors on this board to play my full turn optimally. Where other factions have to carefully plan their tempo and take risks on their turns, I'm just going to move a replacement mole in there to fill in for the tunnel and sway a lord for three points, putting me equal with the vagabond. As was foretold by their workshops, the cats craft master engravers. Then they proceed to recruit, and this is when they choose to move across the board. Rather than craft their other workshop here, however, the cats decide that they're going to fight the lizards again. I'm starting to wonder if this isn't a deliberate ploy on the part of the cats player to feed the lizards so they keep bullying me. It would honestly be very forward-thinking if they were doing that, because then they don't have to go anywhere and the lizards do their job for them. The unfortunate thing that such a play would actually lose to is that as the mole player I actually have more control over the outcast than anyone else just in case you thought that was a threat. The cats use Propaganda Bureau to field hospital their warriors, and I breathe a sigh of relief. Unfortunately for the cats, however, the lizards have tired of the constant attacks and decide to use those acolytes instead to destroy a sawmill, which is currently underdefended in the cat backline. The fact that the cats chose to attack the lizards instead of building a second sawmill only makes this tragedy all the more poignant. Being still possessed of every rabbit card in the entire deck, however, the lizards can only really spend their turn placing more warriors and clearings they already rule. Truly, this 2 VP per turn pace will keep them in the lead, I'm sure. The Vagabond uses their turn to cross the lake and collect the bag, I think? Honestly, who gives a shit? The Vagabond has put themselves way out of the way, and honestly, that's probably the best for everyone here. Especially if someone actually takes the raft away from them. While they spent this turn collecting another ruin, they could have spent those three swords destroying all the lizards in that clearing for a potential nine point lead, which is one of the prevailing reasons why lizards tend to be vagabond fodder more so than any other faction. We've run into a very unusual tension on this board, however. The vagabond potentially could score nine points a turn for the rest of this game if they so chose, but they've put themselves well out of the way and haven't really battled anyone for any reason. The cats currently ride the knife's edge of whether or not they actually get to participate in this game, and the lizards, while their position is extremely strong, have drawn nothing but rabbit cards, meaning that they can't really score anything off of it. I, playing the dudgy, have no such restrictions, however. And even though my hand already matches the clearings that I'm in, I finally have a decision to make, because I have one extra mouse card that I don't really need, and I'm certainly not dumb enough to craft the tea. I've been holding off on putting down some buildings for a while now, and I think it's time to put these warriors I've been recruiting to good use. Some people may accuse me of being a little too blasé about putting down buildings in a game with a very hostile lizard player, but the fact of the matter is, when I can control the outcast myself, it doesn't really matter what the lizard player wants to be doing here. This game is shaped up that the lizards are going to end up in fox and rabbit the whole time, with mouse being a distant memory at best. Since I only have fox and mouse crafting in my hand, however, I resolve that I'm probably not going to be going very fast during this game, and discard the one that I want the Vagabond to have the least. On their turn, the cats finally locate the Hawks for Hire button and decide to replace their lone sawmill, a wise enough decision seeing as they now need to catch up to the rest of the board. They're finally managing to place a foothold on the other side of that choke point as well, which I also admire. Even in spite of their incredibly tenuous situation, this cats player is still doing their best to maintain a pace. Curiously enough, they set several warriors on top of the Vagabond, but choose not to fight him. I'm not sure what they're going for here, because they didn't take the raft away, but I admire the direction they're going. The lizards awake to another yellow hand and red outcast, and in their frustrated impotence, all they can manage to do is convert two of my moles. Don't worry, they'll be back almost immediately. They do, however, have pretty much all of the coins in the deck in their hand currently, and while I would care if it were any other faction, I don't. 
As it stands, the real threat on this board is, understandably, the Vagabond. Even though I am a huge problem in my own right, the fact that the Vagabond has all three of their swords and pretty unfettered access to everyone's shit means that they could just start going and blowing people up for way too much money. At the start of their turn here, they could have moved into the keep and found themselves making about 10 points off of that cardboard, possibly more if the cat's field hospital. With two boots and no hostile relationships, the Vagabond could slip into the forest and make their way all the way to my market if they so chose, but this Vagabond has somewhat of a conscience, it seems. Not only do they not attack the keep, but they also ignore me. I suppose the burden of not having tea is really starting to weigh on them, however, because they skip straight through the keep onto another piece of cat cardboard they could potentially have fought, and that's it, they're out of items. They aided the cats for some things, and then ended their turn. With my turn up again, I have a crucial decision to make. The Vagabond is a genuine threat, and he's next to a lot of very valuable cardboard, and I could, in theory, put down a tunnel and make my way over there to go fight him and put him into the forest for a turn or two. I have the moles, I have the actions, but I don't have to do any of that. Because I'm playing moles. Most militant factions, and indeed most factions in general by this point in the game, would have spread across the board quite widely and would have both liabilities to take care of and also room they want to expand into. As moles, however, I only need one warrior to sway something worth three points, which most other factions have to fight to earn. The Vagabond literally could not be further away from me, the lizards currently cannot threaten me all that much, and well, I want to see what the cats do next. I don't really want to push my luck, however, so I opt not to put down another building, especially because I only have two colors in my hand. So instead, we're going to spend one of these useless fox cards to dig, and then I have six turn actions to work with, and the only thing I really care to achieve on this turn is making sure I can sway a lord, so I'm just gonna skip the mare. You'll have to trust me, though, when I tell you that I definitely earned those four victory points. I'm happy to see the cats put down a sawmill and craft marine broker because honestly at this point they need it. They're falling behind and it's going to be increasingly difficult for them to catch up. They spend the rest of the turn recruiting and moving, which is a fairly wise choice except for the fact that they have the Arbiter currently sitting on one of their builds. Uh, it's hard to effectively defend anything when your opponent can deal nine hits in a turn. Lizards are back up to bad and would you look at that? Still Fox. With only one Acolyte, they don't really have too much they can achieve with it, however. But by god, they sure know who they should be using it on. I've managed to resist shitposting in chat for almost this entire game, but I am but flesh and bone. The Lizards resign themselves to the fact that their hand has been yellow for the entire game, and it's time to just accept that you have to start playing a tall game. And I don't blame them, this is pretty much the only option left to you at this point. Better to make three points a turn than two. Responding to me in chat, the lizard player reveals that they are in fact experienced with fighting against the moles, and we both agree that if he hadn't been doing at least something, I would have completely run away with this game by now. He also reveals that he's aware I've been fucking with the lost souls, which... points for awareness. I, for my part, realize that he has all the goddamn ambushes in his hand, which is less than convenient if I ever had to actually deal with him. The best case for me in this scenario is for the Vagabond to try and fight the lizards, which would be most entertaining. The Vagabond, for their part, is struggling with the choice of what to actually do on their turns because they still have yet to gain any tea. They've already uncovered the hammer, but most certainly nobody in this game has been fool enough to actually craft the tea for this thing, and for good reason. That being said, this Arbiter has been very peaceful comparatively, and I can only hope that they've managed to forget that they have three swords. One always has to hold on to that spark of optimism, after all. I think the Vagabond was reading chat, however, because they opt to spend their precious three refreshes on swords and swords alone. Farewell, cats. You were too precious for this world. As my turn comes back around, it proves kind of suboptimal that I chose to sway the Earl of Stone second instead of the Duchess of Mud. It's not that I'm completely devoid of threats on this board, but I don't want to convince everyone that they have to cooperate against me all of a sudden, and... 
Duchess is certainly easier to fulfill in the short term. I put in another tunnel, just because I can, honestly, and if I do sway Duchess, it would be handy to have two liabilities out on the field, one of which doesn't require me to lose ministers if it blows up. And figuring that the cats have probably grown tired of farming acolytes, I decide to put down my second market. I'm unable to sway a lord, but swaying the banker here is probably wise, as it's usually the best way for moles to close out a game where they've lost everything else. The lizards did manage to stack the lost souls with rabbit cards, however, so I'm not really in a position to change it off of that suit. The good news for me, however, is that with no acolytes forthcoming, they're not really going to be doing anything with it. Thanks to field hospitals, however, the cats are able to return the favor to the vagabond and manage to throw a very violent fight into them. Certainly not the result the cats were hoping for, but it is better that they managed to roll the three in the first place. At around the same time, the lizards correctly surmise that it's probably the point in this game where the table needs to start actually doing something about me, as I'm primed to just score fat points without any opposition. They're not 100% correct, however. The Vagabond is still the one leading this points race, but probably not that well, especially without T. For my part as well, I'm playing a pretty slow roll game as far as mole games go, but I am undeniably a major threat. Even if everything in my market clearing were destroyed right now, I could still arguably find four points on next turn anyways, and probably a couple recruits to boot. Regrettably, the action against the Vagabond has left the cats in a bit of a tough position with only three warriors guarding what is about 13 points worth of warriors in cardboard. The Vagabond is more than capable of chewing through all of that. It may have taken them four turns to do it, but the Lizards finally get to make use of all those blue and yellow cards in their hands as they score a few points and then craft both coins at the same time. A fairly dramatic nine-point turn, but sadly this is one magic trick that they can only perform once. I find myself expecting to face a Vagabond who walks into the keep and walks out with 27 points on the board, but I'm fortunate to find that they choose to go for me instead. Weird choice, but okay. This is as good a time as any to make use of this ambush I've been holding on to, even though it kind of dampens what I can do on my next turn. I know the Vagabond only has the one hammer, and they've already taken some damage from the cats. Between the ambush and the dice, my three hits manages to take out half of their remaining items. They now find themselves in a completely remote, desolate corner of the board with nothing valuable nearby. I think I'll chalk this up to a noble sacrifice on the part of the Vagabond for not wanting to ruin the cats. With only four cards in my hand, one warrior in the burrow, and six actions and three different ways to score points available, four and counting swaying. This is the first time all game I've had to actually think about what to do on my turn. I could use all four of these cards to sway the Duchess for another three points and a sacrificial lord, but that would be kind of limiting, and it wouldn't really make much use of my daylight. And with Price of Failure really only triggering if I lose buildings in two separate battles, I would kind of rather just have more card draw and more points from the Baron, rather than just another Lord. Thus, I'm going to put down my third market and just throw some more warriors on top of it. The remaining three cards can go to the Banker, which is pretty much what the Duchess would have gotten me anyways. An overall gain of one point, and I managed to fuck with the Outcast for another turn. Then, as God's response to my hubris, I draw nothing but voluble craftables and bird cards I can banker away. Truly, there is justice in the world. In chat, the lizards are imploring the Marquise to do something about me. A wise choice. Appropriately enough, I can, in fact, win on my next turn. Or, I probably can, I haven't really thought about it. Sadly, I don't believe the Marquise is in chat this game. Wait, shit, I shouldn't have said anything. Quick, distract him! The cats put down Hawks for Hire, and they do finally make use of those three warriors they've had in the south of the map for this entire game. The cats player is willing to oblige the lizards with a few acolytes and discard rabbit cards, but unfortunately they're not able to overcome the fuckery that I've managed to institute upon them. Unfortunately, they're only able to tie the Lost Souls pile back up, which leaves it stuck on Fox. I sound disappointed about that, but I am not. The sounds the lizard player is making, however, are music to my ears. The frustrated cats player, reasonably enough, laments their situation. I offer them some level of direction, but I just wanted to clarify, this is not an insult, I know it's hard to spell. That's why my video tags have all the misspellings I could think of. Sadly, two acolytes and a fox outcast does not a policed moles player make. The lizards are, at least, able to put down a different garden color, but it will be their last. 
Even the Vagabond is powerless to contribute here, as between their damaged items and a trail of hostile opponents, they simply cannot reach me this turn. At this point, I start carefully calculating exactly how I am going to find 8 points on my turn. I have the 3 from the Baron, certainly, but then I have to figure out whether I'm going to sway anything here, and if I do sway anything, am I going to put down any tunnels if I'm going to try for Duchess at some point, or... No, that wouldn't work. I'd get 6 from Duchess and Baron, and then I'd need both my bird cards to put down the fox crafting I would need for the sword, and... If I need two points of cardboard, well, the odds are pretty good that there's a number of ambushes around, and I can't really fight my way through the lizard garden, and the rest of the gardens are fairly split up. I can't even really go after the cat's woodpile because I would need the brigadier or the mayor to get my six warriors on top of it, which would make it even harder to break. Well, my turn's up, and if I can't find a way to win, then someone else is going to, so I may as well reply. Now I just need to figure out how... Oh, right, silly me. I'm playing moles. Rather than worry about all that silly tactical depth, I can just use my Baron for three points and throw my entire hand at the banker and mayor. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. A victory I definitely deserved. And that's a mole game. I hope you weren't too offended by what I've put before you. Thank you all very much for watching, and remember, tell your friends moles are bullshit.